Savage Dragon. If there was an appropriate Google search result to a comic for a fan by a fan, Image Comics would show up with the Savage Dragon character. A constant since 1992, Savage Dragon is an artist's take on the comic book industry, poking harmless fun at the grievances that have been caused to him. About the series, it is a title holder for the longest running comic book in full color with the same artists and writers all these years. In the words of Eric Larson, the said writer of this brilliant series, it was always aimed at older Marvel readers who were about to throw in the towel on comics altogether. It's the missing link between Marvel and Vertigo, more mature than Marvel. Marvel, less pretentious than Vertigo, the kind of comics I want to read. This book is really self-indulgent. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Blood? No, no it's not blood. What? <laughs> Savage Dragon, Transformational Journey of a Ruthless Alien Emperor Larson has never denied drawing inspiration from other sources in his use when he first started sketching this character. The said other sources included his favorites such as Batman, The Incredible Hulk, Captain Marvel, and Speed Racer. The comic book debut of the characters Paul Dragon happened much later. Savage Dragon was first seen in a two-issue low-print title run that Larson published with two of his friends. This was called Graphic Fantasy, and in these versions, Dragon had retired from a superhero team that the government backed in terms of funding, but he had lost his wife. The story revolved around this loss. A more popular presence was marked by the release of Gary Carlson's Megaton series that Larson was the artist in. Herein, Larson maintained the essence of Dragon from graphic fantasy. However, he changed minor details like those about Dragon's wife. She was seen alive here. In 1992, a few years after Larson's colleagues left their venture, Image Comics, Larson set about to revamp Savage Dragon to a greater standard. From here on, Savage Dragon became more defined. A green-skinned man with a fin that made him about six foot six inches tall, discovered by a member of the Chicago Police Department in the midst of a burning field. He was amnesic, though, shrouding him in a mystery that would enthrall the reader. It was initially planned as a miniseries with three issues, but the popularity scale tipped upwards and it became a monthly series instead. Launched in 1993. Larson remained the constant contributor to the Savage Dragon series, the schedule only lapsing a few times in all these years as some of the other Image Comics characters were brought into the spotlight. At times, Larson produced some supplementary miniseries and allowed other producers in on his ideas. The origins of Savage Dragon were not revealed until the 10th anniversary of Image Comics. A hardcover book was released to mark the occasion, and the reader was for the first time introduced to Emperor Kerr. Kerr was the cruel, pitiless monarch of a nomadic alien race looking for a new home planet. After searching the extent of the universe, years after years, they finally found Earth. The race wanted peaceful coexistence, but Kerr wanted a full takeover of the planet for his own vile intentions, and he went against his people, two scientists, Wyko and Rek who were serving Kerr, found out about his plans. In the spirits of goodness and amity, they decided they would put a stop to it altogether. Conspiring against him, they manipulated Kerr's brain into erasing his memories, replacing them with recent information of those days. Kerr ended up with no recollection of who he was and what his plans were, and was left behind on Earth. His people went ahead with their lives and searched for another planet to inhabit. Savage Dragon Comic Book Appearances in the graphic fantasy series, Paul Dragon, aka The Dragon, was presented to us as a retired member of the Society of Superheroes, or the SOS. SOS was a government-sponsored team, and Paul's life was good until he lost his wife. To fulfill his duties as a father to a young daughter, he quit his service. However, in this time with the SOS, he had made enough enemies who remembered who he was and planned their revenge. On one occasion as Dragon was taking his daughter to an outing at the zoo, one bronze man attacked them in their calf. Dragon's daughter was severely injured, and that was something that drove him halfway back to his service life. Angered by the accident, Dragon started his hunt for information and the whereabouts of the bronze man, only to be knocked out by an old colleague from SOS, Mace. Mace betrayed Dragon, turning him into Bronze Man instead. Dragon was kept in a death trap that Bronze Man had created, from which he managed to escape and kill a whole gang of supervillains associated with Bronze Man. Leading up to the final pages, the Bronze Man was also defeated by Dragon, classic superhero style. In his redeveloped version's first major comic book appearance, Savage Dragon was seen confronting a mass murderer who called himself the Shrew. Shrew had superpowers aside from his vile intentions, needless to say, 
enabling more damage than a mass murderer can commit as is. His first attack came from a place of gross underestimation of his opponent, so he is forced to run to his escape. Back at the police station where he worked, he realized that his close friend Frank Darling was keeping him from important business. Dragon started to lose hope and faith in that person. Once he realized that he was not going to be involved in his own job, he went back to feeling depressed, as he first was when his girlfriend Debbie Harris was murdered. To deal with his feelings, he chose to spend time at a bar with more superhumans, and there, he defeated some members of a rival group, the Vicious Circle. Almost immediately after, the news being broadcasted then caught his eye. It was being said that the superhero Mighty Man had been seen around the city again. The problem? Mighty Man had a heavily publicized death about a year and a half ago. Other news covered matters of the celebrity Peter Clapton, losing his hair to a fire that started from unknown circumstances. The broadcast closed with the news of a married couple in Illinois who had committed suicide while from the basement of their house emanated a disembodied voice calling out for their parents. As he was driven deeper into a pit of depression and constant anxiety, Alex Wilde, another colleague of Dragon's, convinced him to visit his lost girlfriend's grave. Alex believed that it would help Dragon cope with his emotions, but the girl's mother saw him there and unleashed harsh words at him. Back at the police station, he had to entertain repeated phone calls from an old woman who asked for her son Rodney. All these events did not go down well for Dragon, and the news of Shrew's return seemed to finally give him a purpose, or so he believed. As he fought true with a pair of chainsaws, he had a film-like real play in his head. Dragon was reminded of all the pain and anguish he had recently faced. Unable to kill his enemy, Dragon stood there for quite a while, just watching the bloody body lying motionless. Once that phase passed, he collected his wits and returned to the headquarters of his workplace, bandaging himself up in places where he had been injured. Right then, he was assigned to an investigation of an older building under the city where a couple of superpowers were reportedly living. On his way, he was attacked by Barbaric, a powerful superhero. Barbaric had lost his nerve on seeing Dragon's gun and assumed he was in danger. Another action scene ensues, and as Barbaric and Dragon fight, the combined energy of those two powerhouses caused destruction in the area. Buildings collapsed and other property was being affected before Barbaric's partner, Ricochet, came and stood between them, stopping the scene. After Barbaric and Ricochet admitted that they were looking for any work Dragon could give them, Dragon apologized but said he would have to seriously consider their request for help. They were struggling to make ends meet at that point, but Dragon had trust issues, and for good reason too. What happens to this trio is carried on to the next issue. Savage Dragon, the popular cartoon series. Voiced by Jim Cummings, the Savage Dragon was granted his own cartoon series, airing on 26 Saturday mornings throughout the years 1995 and 1996. It was completely based upon the comic book series, produced by Universal Cartoon Studios and a part of the Cartoon Express block on USA Networks. The episodes often starred other popular characters from the comic book series, like Horde, Mako, Overlord, Barbaric, and She-Dragon. Just like in the comics, the dragon was shown as a green-skinned, super-strong humanoid with a head that had a fin, making him look larger than he actually was, and definitely more intimidating. He was found amidst a field in Chicago, engulfed in flames. A Chicago Police Department cop, Frank Darling, rescued him and discovered that Dragon had no memory of his past. He chose to join the police department he was rescued by, and in his tenure with him, he fought several mutant criminals calling themselves Super Freaks. They were led into criminal activities like terrorizing the city's people by one overlord, as big a mystery as Dragon himself. The nuisance of prejudice was dealt with in this series, it seemed, by attempting to be different from the other shows being aired in those times. Heavily muscled characters with elaborate costumes did raise eyebrows. However, the fact that Dragon was a police officer who had made up his mind to work against the authorities instilled in the audience the thrill of defiance. Of course, there was also an anticipation of the outcome of it all. Dragon's scornful attitude and dry humor completed the wholesomeness of the series. Savage Dragon, what makes him so powerful? Agile and physically strong, standing at a massive height of 6 feet and 6 inches with the thin head, Savage Dragon's appearance was quite daunting, as per his character's arc. 
Dragon had Krylon royal blood in him, making him the Chosen One. This physiological advantage gave him several abilities of a superhuman. Not only was his stamina higher than the average human being, but he was very resistant to most mental attacks like telepathic attacks as well. This metal bender, concrete puncher skin was very damage resistant, with fired bullets being rendered useless and fire itself being a harmless friend. Dragon is shown to survive explosions at point blank range with little to no harm being caused to him. Except for extremely sharp weapons, nothing seemed to phase Dragon or impale his skin, for that matter. Even if damage was caused, Dragon will recover very rapidly rapidly and efficiently, unlike his human counterparts. If regeneration of limbs or organs were to be considered, it was a matter of days, not weeks for Dragon. With the experience of all these years behind him, Savage Dragon is acknowledged as one of the greatest fighters, able to take down more than one enemy at once, even those with superpowers like him. Dragon's hand-to-hand -hand combat skills are par excellence, and he is a sharp marksman. Leadership abilities and stealth only add the cherry atop the cake, and so do his abilities as a polyglot. Savage Dragon Closing In Dragon may deal with superheroes as a policeman, but their vigilant character precludes him from fully affiliating with them. That makes the main character's occupation a truly distinctive feature. It may sometimes seem that Larson is cramming unexpected and quite impossible realities into his panel, but one must not forget that it is the world of comics and we ought to take it and roll with it all in good humor. It seems like a matter of perspective, the interpretation of reality, that is. If the silver screen decided to adapt Savage Dragon someday, it would work out as a mature action-packed but comedic twist point for the otherwise largely homogeneous MCU. There is no limit to Image Comics' growth overall once it transformed into a home for Hollywood intellectual properties. If Savage Dragon comic books haven't become your cup of tea yet, they could sure be your cup of Americano. Yep, the plot hits you just that hard if you spend some time with it. More than anything else, Eric Larson has an enviable streak with this comic, and it will be going down in history. And if you like our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone.